Welcome. There's no denying that whatever mood we bring to the mat when we start our practice will be transformed into something better. So here we are today, back on the mat, clearing, purifying in all ways, so that we can better listen, hear, be guided by subtler forces, more of a vessel state. So gathering all of your yoga staff and let's meet on the mat in Sukhasana, ankles crossed, and begin our practice. The eyelids closing and the eyeballs receding to the back skull, both the right and the left, moving backwards towards the inner edges of the back skull. And from that new viewpoint, from the back skull, gazing down at the inner wall of the stem plate and seeing how you could lift and broaden the stem plate and see that from inside. And then lifting the hands up and pressing the palms together in front of that broad and lifted stem plate. The eyes still receding, the gaze still from the back of the skull. Gazing down at the heart and lifting that area to the sky. Opening our practice together with one arm. Inhale. Oh. And then raising the eyes opening. And ready to begin. Okay, moving our bolsters and grabbing a blanket, Yogamudrasan, Vandrasan, with the blanket rolled up, just immediately getting right into the organic body, igniting that awareness and intelligence there. So let's roll our blankets. Just enough that we can get a nice massage that we can lift the organs over that roll. The knees are slightly spread so that they can accommodate the ribs as we come forward. And exhaling forward. And then hands onto the blankets, pulling back and down as we extend forward. Let the breath and the blanket do their work. Keep pulling with the hands back and down to increase sensitivity there. The outer thighs cutting down towards the ground. The femurs coming into the hip sockets. Get to the side, grabbing a block, grabbing a strap, super parasans. Coming to lie down on the mat in super parasan, block by the outside edge of the hip, loop in the strap, bending the right leg, and holding the loop. Inhale and exhale the leg to the right feeling it supported by the brick. Broaden the pubic bone. Roll the shoulders back. And now grip the outer thighs upwards into the outside edge of the femur bones. And then bringing the legs back up 
And again, exhaling down. Tighten the outer hips towards each other. And reintegrate the femur bones into the hip sockets. Lift the chest. And back up. Further, last time. Exhaling down. Grip the legs even more. See, is one leg gripping more than the other? Can you have even attention in both of your legs? And then bringing the leg back up and releasing to change sides. Moving the block to the left. And then turn around and then end up in the plants. Holding the loop, both legs firm, and exhale to the left. The outer edges of the feet coming back towards the hips helps us to further grip the outer hips towards each other, to have that firmness there. And bringing the leg back up, and exhaling back down. Find the outside edge of your thighs, hard area to reach. Squeeze in towards the outer thigh bone and see how that helps the outer hips to also bolt towards each other, bring that firmness there. And then bringing the legs back up. One more time. Exhaling the left leg to the left. Press that right heel down. Our attention naturally goes to the leg that seems to be doing the most work. It's moving, but redistribute into the right leg. Even out the tension. Be present everywhere. And two, and one. Bringing the leg back up and releasing. Both knees towards the chest. Front shoulders back. Coming to Urva Prasadita Parasan. We just move the block here and the strap so you can see more clearly. If you need a blanket under the lower back to help the lower back connect to the mat, Make sure to place that. Cross the thumbs, stretch the arms, pushing the legs to 90 degrees. Redraw the femur bones into the hips. Feel the sharpness of the legs. The outside edges of your feet coming back towards the hips, bolting the hips, the outer hips towards each other. And then to 60 degrees, pressing the lower back to the floor. The outer edges of the feet coming back towards the hips. Bolt the outer hips towards each other. And then down even lower if possible. Keep the lower back pressing to the floor. Keep stretching the arms. Extending your attention everywhere. And back up to 60. Reconnect the lumbar to the ground. Press down. Push out through the feet. And back up to 90. Draw those femur bones in. Stretch the arms. Open the chest. And bending the knees. Feet to the floor. Lifting the arms up. Changing the cross of the thumbs. And stretching the arms back. Feet off the ground. And with an exhale, pushing to Udva Pasarita Parasana. Reconnect and feel everything, sharpen everything, check everything. And now lowering the left leg down to 30 degrees, the heel hovering above the floor. And slowly, keeping the lower back pressed down, crossing at 60, and changing sides. Grip the legs again, and slowly, meeting at 60 degrees, and changing sides. Two more times. Keep pressing the lower back to the ground. And changing sides. Last time, repress the lower back down. Slowly grip the legs. And that was the final one. Lift that left leg up. And bending the knees, feet to the floor. Lift the arms up, change the cross of the thumbs, re-stretch the arms back. Feet off the floor. 
pushing the legs to 90. Udha Prasadita Parasa. So we're going to go all the way down to 30, up to 90, so like this. Back up, and then we're going to lift to the sky. So try not to do this action, but to actually lift up that way. Okay? Here we go. Lower back pressing to the ground. The core firmly knitting towards it. 60, 30, 60, 90. Lift. 60, 30, 60, 90. Lift. Two more. 60, 30, 60, 90. Lift. Last one. 60, 30, 60, 90. Lift. Bending the knees. Feet to the floor. Got one last cycle. Lift the arms up. Change the cross of the thumbs. Re-stretch the arms back. Make sure you're not over-pulling the arms out of the shoulder sockets. You're really stretching the arms. The elbows are firm. but drawing the head of the arm bone into the shoulder socket. Feet off the floor. Pushing the legs to 90. Lower back connecting. Grip the legs. Femur bands. And lower into 60. Spread the feet apart to Upavishta Kanasana. The outer edges of the feet coming to the outer hips. Bolt the outer hips. Squeeze. Keep that squeezingness as we bring the legs towards each other. And back up. Upavishta Kanasana. Imagine your heels are pressing on the ground. Feet parallel. And back in. Upavishta Kanasana. Press the lower back to the ground. Squeeze the outer edges of the feet towards the hips. And back in. And back in and lift up. Bending the knees and Deep inhalation, deep exhalation, relax the abdomen. And let him go. Taking hold of your block again and your strap. Another round of the lateral sutta parangustrasans, but this time with the bend and extend action. So the block is by the right hip, sutta tarasan. Loop on the foot, roll this thigh in, bend this right leg like a baratonasan, the heel to the groin, and this arm can always help you to open the leg, rolling the inner groin back. From here, make sure that your block is really supporting the outer thigh, the outer hip. And then, we're in bend mode, and now let's extend with the exhale. And bending back in. And extending, drawing the head of the femur bone in, pulling the hand on the loop. And bending. And extending. Grip the outer thighs. And bending. And extending. And bending in. Now bend the left leg too, place the foot on the floor. And place the outer ankle on the front of that left thigh. You can take the strap off. Interlock the fingers behind the back of this knee and use your elbow again to help push the inner knee away from you as you bring that leg closer and closer. And now put both arms inside, separate the arms, come right up so that as you close the elbows, the inner elbow is hooked around the outer shin. Pulling it in, trying to equalize if one side is lifted up for more than the other. Keep pulling the outer edges of the feet down the length of the outer calves, the outer knees, the outer thighs towards the hips. A line of continual energy there. And then straighten that leg. And then extend the leg down. Keep that shin coming towards you. Now grip that left leg, roll it in, press the heel down, press the front thigh down. And two. And one. Releasing. And let's change sides. Left leg, bend and extend. Lateral Sutta Parangustrasana. From Sutta Tarasan. Loop on the strap. Holding the loop. 
bending, finding our arms, our back and our action. Here we are, let's extend. Rip the femur bends in and bending and extend. Push through the balls of the feet to distribute your energy evenly, even though you feel so much in the left bend and extend leg. And bending in, connect with your right heel and extending. Suck the outer thighs in. And one more time, bending and extending. Let the block be sucked up towards the thigh. Open the chest. And bending. Bending the right leg now, the foot on the floor. Placing that left outer ankle on the front. Interlocking the fingers behind the knee. And drawing that leg closer the inner knee of the bent leg moving away from us, the elbow helping that action. And now the hands coming inside, separating the hands, and as we fold the elbows, they find the shin, and they pull the shin down. Going a little bit more with the right arm to equalize. Finding the outer edges of the feet, feeling that river of energy running up the outer leg, even in this pose. And now stretching the right leg straight and slowly descending. Muscles gripping around the legs, that firmness, that sharpness. Press the front thighs down, draw the shin closer. And three, and two, and one. And releasing and coming down. To be better to that around Lining our feet up, lining our inner knees up. So that as much as possible, the sacrum and the pelvis can be even on the left and the right. Relax the shoulders, relax the jaw, relax the cheeks. Taking a few breaths here. The eyeballs still receding into the back skull. And then feet to the floor, rolling over and coming up. Okay, taking two blocks, moving the strap to the side. Blocks at the front of the mat. And coming to stand. Right leg forward, left leg back, simplified Bhashvatasa with our hands on the block. Turning the hips. Gripping the legs, moving the blocks that are underneath the shoulders. Push the front heel down and forward. And push the back heel back and down. Roots of the thighs sharp, lift the chest. Turn the hips more and more, keep turning the hips. Turning the hips. Now bending that front knee deeply. Keep pushing into the back heel, feeling the back of the calf stretch open, bending the knee, moving the blocks forward, shortening the distance between the feet, and lifting Adhavadavadasana three. Squeeze the back of your knee, grip the front thigh up. Bolt the outer hips. Now press into the hands to move the sternum forward. And then bending that standing leg, foot to the floor, and separating the feet again. Simplified Pashvottanasana. Lift the chest, re-grip the legs. And changing sides, left leg forward, right leg back. Find the heels, press them down and away from each other. And then grip the legs up, turn the hips. Press down into the hands, lift the chest. And now bending the front knee, deepening the groin as we do that, moving the blocks forward, 
moving the back foot in and lifting Adha Virabhadasana 3. Squeezing that back inner knee, pushing out through the inner foot, the outer edges of the feet still traveling up the outer legs to the outer hips. Press into the hands to lift the chest. And bending the front knee, foot to the floor, moving the blocks back, stepping back, simplified Vajra Tanasa. Refine your heels, reconnect with the femur bones, lift the chest. And preparing to come up and stepping the feet together. Tadasa. Okay, so now we have to come to a wall in the wall leg phase, and I am going to move the camera so you have a good view here. We've got some fun Parivrita Trikonasana and Parivrita Adha Chandrasans lined up. Here's our setup. Mat to the wall, we're going to the right first, we're coming back to simplified Pashvottanasana. I'm doing the mirror image of you. So the right leg forward, the outer right tip is by the wall, the left leg back, coming down, finding simplified Pashvottanasana, getting some distance between the feet, gripping the legs, Pressing the heels down and away from each other. The chest forward. And now we're turning and twisting to the right, to the wall. The right hand coming to the wall. Using the hand pressing on the wall to help us to traction and turn and twist. Keep pressing into the back heel. Bolting the outer hips together so that the pelvis area stays stable trying to twist from the belly button. And then back to Pashvottanasan, re-grip the legs, the femur bones, and coming back up. Moving our blocks and turning to the left-hand side. So the left leg is forward, the left side of the body is closest to the wall, hands to the block, get distance between the feet, activate the heels, pressing down and away from each other, and grip the legs up, turn the hips. Find the outer hips, bolt them towards each other, and then press into the hands to move the chest forward, get that length. And now coming into Parivrita Tikkarasana on the left, turning, finding the wall. Connect with that back heel again, squeeze that back in the knee tightly. Bolting the outer hips towards each other, trying to keep the lumbar area, the pelvis area stable. And instead trying to turn from the belly button, the right belly button to the left, turning, twisting. And coming back to simplify Pashvottanasana, re-grip the legs, push into the back heel. And lifting up. Okay, staying facing the same side, so on your left hand side, and you're stepping the right leg forward, and the left leg back. So the leg that's in front, is not no longer the leg that's closest to the wall. Finding simplified Vajvodhanasa. Connect with your heels, with the roots of the thighs. Parivrita Trikarasana to the right. Turning and twisting to the right. Bolt the outer hips. Squeeze the back in the knee. 
Keep rolling, turning, twisting. Stretch the arm out and lift that right arm up. Try to keep the hips stable, to yield from the belly button. And two. And one. Bring the arm down, back in. Simplified Vashwabhanasa. Regrip the legs. And coming back up. Turning around, changing sides. So you're bringing your left leg forward, the leg that's away from the wall. The right leg back. Simplify Vashwabhanasa. Press those heels down away from each other and regrip the legs. Coming now to Padigrita Tirikarasana on the left. So moving the hand across, left hand holding the hip. Exhale, turning, twisting. And now extending the arm and lifting up. Femurs in, chest opening and lifting, turning from the belly button. And two, and one, arm down, holding the hip, turn again. Simplified Pashwapanasana, press into the heels, reconnect to the legs. And back up, and releasing Tadasana. Taking a breath here, neutralizing the eyeballs receding backwards. And now let's continue with that, moving into Parivrita Abda Chandrasana. So moving your blocks to the left hand side of the mat. We want to be really close to the wall in this variation. The right leg forward, the left leg back. Actually, I'm going to move back and the hand up. And the plants again. And make sure that your left outer hip is pressing against the wall. Grip the legs, we engage all those actions. Now bending the front knee, femur bone in, outer left hip against the wall. Moving the blocks forward, reducing the distance between the feet. And lifting the leg, finding our friend, Ardha Viradarasana 3. Feel the outer hip against the wall. The outer edges of the feet coming back towards the hips. Okay, you can see where we're going with this now. We are turning and twisting to the right. Holding onto the hip. Moving the elbow back, the outer arm back, twisting. And then extending the arm up. Parivrita Ardha Chandrasana. Femur bones strongly into the hip sockets and press down in order to lift up to get that lifting action. And then coming back, the hand to the hip, facing forward, bending the standing leg, stepping back. Finding distance again, blocks back, simplified partial parasa. And back up. And let's do that on the other side. So moving the blocks to the other side of the mat. Left leg, whoops, I need to go back. Left leg forward, right leg back. Making sure that the outer right hip is against the wall and finding a simplified Pashvadarasa. Bending the front knee, drawing the femur bone in as we do so. Moving the blocks forward, moving the back foot in, making sure the outer right hip is against the wall. And lifting, finding Ardha Viravadrasana 3.
Regrip the legs. And preparing to turn and twist to the left. Hand to the hip. Move the outer arm back. See how that opens the shoulder. And then extending the arm up. Parivita Abha Chandrasana. Keep pulling the outer edges of the feet back towards the outer hips. Bolt the outer hips for firmness. And twist from the navel. Hands coming back, hands to the hip, twist, back down, bending the standing leg, stepping back, even further back, simplified partial panasa. Neutralize. Lift the chest and re relax the face. Hmm, and we're going to move away from the wall now. We're going to move the camera back to its normal spot. Coming to our mats with a chair and three blocks. And if you need a blanket on your chair because you're tall, so you need that extra lift, of course, having those things in place. So see you back there. Hello again. <laughs> Here's our setup. Chair, three bolster, uh, three blocks, one, two, and three on the right hand side of the back of your chair. And now we're stepping in. Placing, so you have to come right to the edge of the chair so that you can lift the leg and place the right foot on that top block. And now extending the left leg, heel down, thigh rolling in, outer edge of the foot coming back to the hips. Malichasana three. So we're turning and twisting to the right. Left hand holding the railing. Inhale, exhale. The left hand pushing, pulling. The right hand Pulling the outer arm back as we turn and twist from the belly button. And then back to the front. Holding the railing, lift the chest, we roll the left thigh in. And again, with the exhale. Press that right foot down, femurs into the hip sockets. And twisting from the navel. And back to the front, hold the rail, lift the chest. And again, exhale. We stabilize the legs, draw the femurs in, lift the chest. And back to the front, lift the chest. And releasing. Moving the blocks so that they're on the left-hand side. Coming forward, left foot on the blocks. Mighty chest now, three leg. Ooh, right leg extended. Roll the thigh in, press the heel down. Lift the chest. Inhale. Exhale, right hand holding. Left arm coming round, all the way around the corner. Each arm having their purpose in the twistingness. And back to the front. Lift the chest. And exhale. And back to the front. Lift the chest and exhale. Femurs into the hip sockets. Turning from the navel.
and back to the front. Lift the chest and releasing. Moving the blocks to the right. Coming to Parivrita Marichasana 1. So right foot on the block, blocks. Left leg extended. So instead of turning to the right, we're turning to the left. And we're using the outer elbow against the inner knee, the hand on the chair, to turn and twist. So here we go. Inhale. Exhale. Back to the front. Press down into the hands to lift the chest. And exhale. If it's too much to turn the head, you can just keep it facing forward, working on the trunk independently of the head. And back to the front, lift the stern plate, and exhale to the left. Back to the front, relift, and releasing and moving the blocks to the left hand side. Left foot on the blocks, oops, there we go. Right leg extended, outer edges of the feet coming back towards us. Mind chest on that one, so moving away, the outer elbows and the other inner knee. Lift the chest, inhale, exhale. back to the front, lift the chest, on the next exhale, twisting from the navel, and back to the front, press down, lift up, femurs into the hip sockets, and exhale. And back to the front, lift the chest, and releasing. One last cycle of Mani Chasana threes on each side, taking the twist a little deeper. So moving the blocks to the right. Right foot up, finding our Mani Chasana three leg, femur into the hip socket, left leg extended. Lift the cellular chest, outer arms back. And this time we're going to exhale the outer elbow to the outer knee and the other hand comes back. Here we go. Bolt those outer hips so it's not the pelvis area that's becoming unequal as we twist. The thoracic spine is twisting. The dorsal spine is turning. And finding the navel, the belly button, as the source of the twist. And back to the front. Lift the chest. And again, exhale. Each time going a little bit further. And back to the front. Press down, lift up. Last time on the right hand side, exhale, twist. Back to the front and changing sides. Last time, last side, Mani Chasana 3, outer elbow to the outer knee. Just think of all the fantastic cleansing that we're doing on our organs right now. Left leg into my chest and three. Right leg extended. Lift the chest. Be present. Inhale. Exhale.
back to the front. Press down, lift the chest up, femur bones in, and exhale. Hold the outer hips, keep that firmness. And back to the front, last time. Relift the chest. And exhale. And back to the front. Feet down, coming out. Taking a blanket. Turn this way. And just a quick little lovely yoga mudrasana on the chair with the fold of our roll of our blanket, like the first pose that we did, but on the chair. So sit back, feet parallel. This roll here to continue that beautiful in depth massage of our third brain, the gut, and of course all our organs. Hands pulling back and down making sure that the organs are going to lift up over. Pull back and down with the hands. Drop the head completely. And then releasing the blanket with the hands and see if you can reach for the back arm or the back legs. If not, keep holding the blanket. Releasing fingertips to the floor, re emerging. And let's continue with the chair and the blanket for a little bit for some forward bends. So, moving the chair so that it's going to be at the front of the mat, having a blanket for our buttocks, and having a bolster on the chair. Here's our setup, blanket, bolster, sitting, taking Janu Shishasan. Left leg extended, right knee bent, rolling the inner groin back. Now moving the chair in so that you can hold onto the upper arms and move the inner elbows forward, getting that lift in the chest in our Janu Shishasan. And when you have that, go ahead and come and try to move the inner elbows forward, the outer arms right here moving towards the palms, broadness, engagement. The inner groin of the bent leg is rolling back and we're twisting from the navel. The shoulder blades going down the back. The inner bones into the hip sockets. And now holding the chair and sliding it or moving it back depending on your chair. And put the hands underneath the bolster. Stretching more forward, but press down into the forearms, the hands, to move the cellular chest forward. Roll the inner groin of the bent leg back. Twist from the navel. Now removing the hands from there, coming down and seeing if you can reach for the back rung or reach for the legs of the chair. Coming forward, femurs into the hip sockets, the inner groin of the back leg rolling back. 
twisting from the belly button. From the right to the left. Leading with the cellular chest. stages. The first one with the chair close to lift the chest and then increasingly going down, trying to keep the awareness here of broadness coming forward. Left knee bent. Rolling the thigh in, the outer edge of the foot coming back towards us and the chair nice and close so that we can hold onto the upper arms and change and down. Inner elbows going forward, the outer arms pushing into the palms of the hands to keep that broadness. Keep walking them forward, rolling the inner groin of the bent leg backwards. Press down into the inner elbows to move the chest forward, shoulder blades going down the back. Feel the ribs opening, feel the lungs opening. And now let's move the chair forward so that we can reach hands underneath the bolster. And press down into the forearms to ignite the chest again so we're not making a C shape. We're trying to move the shoulder blades down the back to keep the backwards engaged. Twisting from the navel, left to the right without involving the bent leg. And now moving the hands and reaching for the back rungs. Keep rolling that bent leg back. Feel the beauty of that back hip being opened. Stay present in the back body the back ribs and exhaling the left belly button to the right. And then coming back up. And releasing. Same way, three stages. Moving the chair in, widening the sit bones apart. Heels firm, legs gripped, holding onto the outer arms. Moving the inner elbows forward, broadening the outer arms away from each other so the shoulders are broad. You can lift the chin a little bit, which helps us to lift the chest. Femurs into the hip sockets. Feel the back muscles broadening and the shoulder blades going down the back. And now let's move the chair a little bit further away. Hands underneath the bolster. Pressing down into the forearms to keep moving the cellular chest forward. Having clarity in the integration of the femur bones. Clarity in space between the sharpness of each buttock bone. And now moving the hands, coming deeper. Keep gripping the quadriceps up. And keep pressing the quadriceps also down to the thigh bone. Don't allow the shoulders to hunch up towards the ears in effort to move the trapezius muscles down the back. Move the top of the arm bones into the shoulders.
Okay, it is now time for Shishasana. We're going to do it against the wall because we're going to do Upa Hishakamasa and Shishasana with a strap around the outer edges of our feet as part of our Shishasana cycle. So, getting yourself set up and let's meet back there. So, just to remind you, this is Upa Hishakamasana where the feet are parallel, they're not turning open, okay, and they're not rolling in. And when we're in our Shishasana, we're going to be doing Upa Vishakamasana, but not quite as wide like this. And we're going to have the straps around the outer edges of the feet, and the outer edges of the feet coming down the outer edges of the thighs into the hips. So let's make our loop accordingly. If you go too wide um, in this variation, you kind of lose contact, lose sensation. Better to be a little bit smaller than too wide with your Upa Vishakasana strap. So about this, you can always come down and adjust if you feel you've gone too small. All right, preparing, tucking in, and having the strap handy. First of all, Shishasana one. Arms lifted, turn the palms, hands to the shoulders, outer elbows scooping in. Bring the tips of the elbows to the blanket, interlocking, pressing the tips of the thumbs against each other, crown of the head to the floor. Straightening the legs, brace the arms. Coming up with straight legs or bent knees, wherever is best for you. Finding Shishasa. Press down into the forearms, lift the shoulders up. Become sensitive to your eyeballs again. They have a tendency to bulge forward in Shishasa. So keep having them recede to the back of the skull. And from the back of the skull, that inner vision to the inner wall of the sternum plate. If you can bring the feet away from the wall, of course, go ahead and do that. Feel the outer edges of the feet coming down the outer legs towards the hips and bolt the outer hips towards each other so that there's firmness. Keep lifting the trapezius muscles up. Drawing the lats in. We're going to prepare to come down now to do the other side with the straps on our feet in Upa Vishakamasa. So coming down. And out. All right, the straps are going to go around the outer edges of our feet. Preparing that already. And into Shirshasa, changing the interlock of the fingers from your habitual interlock, bracing the arms, straightening the legs, and lifting up.
drawing the lats in, lifting the shoulders up. Finding the receding quality of the front face, of the eyeballs. Pull the outer edges of the feet down the outer legs towards the outer hips. We'll wrap the muscles around the thigh bones and iron the front thighs to the bones as you charge the legs up. Keep pressing down into the outer wrists, lifting the shoulders up. The back ribs pressing in, the chest opening. Femur is coming into the hip sockets. Preparing to come down now. You can bend the legs or come down with straight legs. Yoga Mudrasan, holding onto the outer arms like we did in our forward bends, placing the inner elbows on the blankets, moving them forward, and then moving the outer arms into the palms of the hands, getting that broadening action, forehead down to the blanket. Relax the thighs and connect the top of the thighs into the hip sockets. And now changing across of the arms. Moving the inner elbows forward, broadening, moving the outer arms to the palms of the hands, coming down. The thighs are gripping. And then coming back up. Vajrasana. Outer arms back. Chest effortlessly lifting. And releasing. All right, well, we're here, and the chair is close by, and we have a bolster and a block. Let's come into back bends with the chair upside down, with our hands against the wall. So I'll go gather all that stuff and we'll meet back in our new fantastic setup. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> the chair has been turned upside down. The top railing is against the wall so it can't slide. We have a block that we're going to sit on. You can choose your height. We have a bolster that's going to support our spine. And it's going right here. We're going to sit here. We have a strap to keep the legs, the thighs parallel. Sitting on the bolster and adjusting so that you feel that as you lie back, the entire bolster is supporting the spine, the neck, and then taking our straps. Legs through. Feet, hip distance apart, making sure that your outer thighs are really feeling the strap helping and the outer thighs coming in. So avoiding this action, which often comes when we're upside down, because there's so much going on when we're upside down. So easing back into diffusing attention everywhere. 
to connect to our feet once we're in it. Lying back. Bringing the arms back. Feet closer and I think we're ready. Ready? Inhale. Exhale, push into the feet, lift the hips, sliding back on the bolster. The forehead coming close to the wall. Walking the hands down, the forearms against the wall. The top of the arm bone coming into the shoulder socket. You can come right back and have the forehead on the wall. It's a really good center point from which to feel the left and right body. Then we can explore more thoroughly, more sensitively. Keep pressing into the heels, lifting the middle buttocks up strongly. Scooping those outer elbows in, not allowing the elbows to widen apart. Lifting the chest to the sky, freeing the ribs. And now pressing purposefully into the forearms to move the front ribs up and to broaden them and to bring them closer and closer to the wall. So we feel a strong stretch in the abdominal cavity through the pressure of the forearms. And now we're going to come down. Outer elbows coming in. As we sit down, the hands can lift up, the arms straight. And then coming back down. Okay, let's intensify a little, little bit. So we're going to move our chair a little bit away from the wall. Now that we feel comfortable and we've engaged into that movement. finding our support again. Checking that everything is in place, that it's not crooked. Feet at distance apart, parallel. If anything, the heels turning out a little bit. Femurs into the hip sockets, chest open. I think we're set to go. Inhale, exhale, pressing, lifting, sliding back. Scooping the outer elbows in. Seeing if maybe this time you could get palms of the hands to the mat and the forearms to the wall. Bring the feet in. Relax the face. And even though we're fully supported, keep pressing into the feet to lift the middle buttocks up. Don't let them hang down. Remember, we want to ignite the cells everywhere. Pressing down into the heels of the hands. Broaden the shoulders. Activate. And slide back a little bit more. Outer elbows scooping in towards each other. Inner arms rolling away from each other. Now try to find the ribs underneath the shoulder blade area. And with the next exhale, press those ribs up. And feel what happens to the front and side ribs that correspond to that area. As you press them up, feel that new broadness. Breathe into that new space. The eyeballs still receding. to come out, hands coming to the wall, outer elbows scooping in, and sliding down, back to our bolster, taking a little breath here, relaxing from any strain, effort, 
All right, coming up, third and final one. If you feel up to it, taking our chair even further back, otherwise staying in this last version. Move that around. I think it's like a mattress that takes on bends that we use literally. There we go. All right, starting position. Connecting with the feet, femurs into the hip sockets. And lifting. Arms back, finding a wall, outer elbows scooping in. Moving back, bringing the feet in as needed. Hands coming down if possible to where the wall and the floor connect. In the back of the neck, the back of the skull are still supported by the end of the bolster. Press into the feet and stretch into the hands. Breathing here. Keep lifting the middle buttocks up, moving the sacrum towards the knees. Go back further if you can. See if you can bring the fingers onto the mat and the heels of the hands onto the wall. Keep the shoulders broad. Even out the breath. Try to find that ease within the pose. Where we stop struggling, where we accept the pose. Where we invite it into us. And now bending the arms and holding onto the outer arms. And pulling the elbow tips back to the wall and down to the ground and press the shoulder blades up. Again, pull the elbow tips back to the wall and down to the ground and press the shoulder blades up. And then changing the cross of the arms. Holding the outer arms, moving the outer arms into the palms of the hands, feel the broadness. And now pull those elbow tips back to the wall behind for length. And down to the ground, press the shoulder blades up. One more time, actively. Pull back and down, press the shoulder blades up. And then releasing, hands back to the wall. Pushing ourselves away from the wall. And then finding our chair and sliding down our bolster. And just resting here. All right, and coming up. One more back then. Tight work, chair, strap, mat away from the wall. See that. So, <laughs> coming into our chair, strap in hand. Putting the strap on our legs with the buckle up top and between the middle of the thighs. And then taking the excess strap underneath, taking it underneath the chair so that it's waiting for us back there. Coming in, adjusting for our torso size so that the front rim of the chair is pressing 
right? The ribs just underneath the shoulder blades forward. And shoulders rolling back. Keep the knees bent, the heels firmly pressing down, the middle buttocks lifting up. And now reach back with your hands and take hold of the strap. Stretch the arms, broaden the shoulders, the strap is taut. As we pull with the strap, we also feel the action it brings to the legs. We're more able to really feel the outer thighs coming in. Connecting our outer hips together and the femurs, even here in back bend, coming into the hip socket so that the chest can better open from that action. Now we're going to begin to walk our hands up the strap towards the chair, keeping the strap taut. Rolling the elbows away from each other as they bend. One hand at a time. The front face receding, the eyeballs receding. What about the feet? What's happening in the feet? Lift the toes off the mat. Be just in the feet. And as you lift the toes off the mat, lift the shins up to the knees. And press the middle buttocks higher to the sky. And coil the middle and upper back. Head back. Don't let the outer elbows move away from each other. Keep scooping them in towards each other. And the inner arms spiraling away from each other. Now find your front and side ribs just above the abdominal area and try to lift them up and to broaden them, to lift and to broaden, pulling on the strap, lifting and broadening, lifting and broadening. And now we're going to re-stretch our arms straight. Release the strap, bring the hands to the railing of the chair. Preparing to come up by bending the elbows down to the seat of the chair. And coming up, head lifting. Hands coming to the chair. Lift the buttocks, move them back. And just rest here. Holding the outer arms. Moving back on our chair and moving the strap to just above the knees. Widen the sit bones. The feet are parallel. Light Balabhajasa. Inhale. Exhale, twisting to the right. We know the actions well from all of our Mani Chasan threes today. So let the organs drop. Keep the pubic bone perpendicular. And back to the front. To the left, inhale. And exhale. Press both buttock bones down. All right, ah, transformation everywhere. Let's come to chair savangasana. So we need a bolster, we need any blankets for our chairs and another blanket 
four in front of the bolster, meeting back here. Here's my setup, and I'm about five eight. So two here to lift the hips up enough that doesn't over arch the back and really good lift. We're using the bolster this way today, which is really fantastic because this round edge of the bolster presses into that upper back area, igniting that action, and the back of our head is here. All right, coming in. And coming down. Make sure the bolster is right in the middle. Bringing the hands through underneath that bottom bar and reaching for the back legs of the chair. The outer arms pushing down towards the bolster on the ground. Bring the feet on the railing and moving our hips forward to the edge of the seat of the chair so that we're not overemphasizing the potential of archiness in the lumbar. We want the lumbar to be firm. The thoracic spine has been asked to open the dorsal spine, but firmness in the lumbar. And then with an exhale, extend the legs straight to the sky. Outer edges of the feet coming down to the outer hips. Front face receding, eyeballs receding. Keep pressing the arms down, pressing the shoulder blades and the back ribs forward to get that inner expansion. Bolting the outer hips. Now widening the feet apart to Upavishtapanasa. Recreate the feeling of the straps on our feet from our Upavishtakasana and Shishasana, so not going too wide. Femurs coming into the hip sockets firmly, muscles gripped, and outer edges of the feet coming back towards the outer hips. Feet to the railing. We're going to prepare to push our legs diagonally away. Inhale and exhale, extend the legs diagonally away. The backs of the knees are on the railing, but the legs are charged. The outer edges of the feet coming back towards us. The sacrum moving towards the heels, the middle buttocks pressing up. The arms pressing down. Keep coiling the middle upper back. Each exhale pressing the back ribs in. Each inhale feeling the new freedom that that brings to the front and side ribs. Preparing to bend the legs, the feet coming back to the railing. Opening the legs, Jibbalakonasa. Press the feet against each other, 
so that the legs stay dynamic. As we press the feet, the outer hips coming towards each other, the inner groins are rolling to the outer groins, and the femurs coming into the hip sockets. Let each inhale be a truly magnificent experience. Really, this upside down was supported in this way completely enhances our ability to feel that expansion in the ribs, the side ribs. The inhale lifting those often forgotten areas into brightness, into openness. Bringing the knees in towards each other again. Releasing the hands. Preparing to slide out. So feet can come to the seat of the chair. As we move ourselves backwards. Nice and gently. And then the lower back resting on the bolster. And you can just slightly move the chair back so it's just resting on the back two legs when you put your calf on, calves on. It's a little more comfortable that way, breathing. even more, so that our lower back is coming onto the blankets, just resting the inner knees together, or having the heels on the chair. Re-relax the lower back to the floor. Re-relax the organs towards the lower back. So we have our chair, we're going to use it for our legs. Not as many blankets on it if you had two. Unless your legs were extraordinarily long, then of course build up. Bolster to the side. One blanket for the neck and head. up if you think you might get chilly and then let's lie down feeling our back body and how it's lying on the mat are we pressing more into one side than the other what can we do to have evenness in the front body in the back body in the sides body And then the arms extending, that final rolling open of the shoulders. And as the eyelids close, we allow ourselves to sink into the depths of Shavasana.
They were sitting their hands up and just resting them at the roots of the thighs, the, the, the lower abdomen. Bringing the feet forward off the chair, rolling gently over. Emerging the eyelids, gently opening. And immediately just diffusing the gaze forward, side, back. And welcome back. Our practice is complete. So this is a perfect time post-practice to ask intuition for some guidance. If there are any issues in your life, your mind that are problematic and you're looking for some guidance, an excellent time. The mind has been cleared. We're in a meditative state. And naturally, the first answer that is given, the immediate first answer that is given to the question is the right one. Namaste. Hope we practice again together soon. Take care.